In this video, we will provide some best practices for creating menus designed for mobile devices and how to override a menu for a mobile terminal. We recommend creating mobile-friendly menus to use on your mobile devices instead of using your regular everyday menus. This will help both with loading time and ease of search for your staff. Keep in mind that the mobile point-of-sale app is an extension of your point-of-sale system. It is meant for table-side ordering in mobile environments and can be used in offline areas. Staff still have the ability to use the point-of-sale terminal for additional items or functions as needed. Before you create your mobile-friendly menus, here are some best practices to consider. Let's do a quick overview of how to design a menu. For more information, watch the video titled Point of Sale Menu Design – How to Build Great Menus. You can view and edit your current menus or create a new menu using the Set Up Another Menu Design Code option. It is recommended to create new menus specifically for the mobile app. Give your menu a code. It may be helpful to keep a consistent coding scheme for your mobile menus if you plan to create more than one. If you are creating a new menu, you will be asked which menu template you'd like to copy from. We recommend using the Start Without a Default Menu option from the Lookup so you have a blank canvas, or select an existing mobile template if you have already created one. When you copy a menu, it copies the menu description, so make sure you update that to Entree, Appetizer, Dessert, etc. You can also add a tab description which will display on the menu tab or a list title within the app. Confirm what device you are making the menu for before you create it, or at least confirm the device size that will be most commonly used at the club. This will help you fit the menu to the device. If your device has a screen width of 7 to 10 inches, the app will display the button view menu, which is five columns of buttons. To make a fifth column, select a button you wish to split, then select split button. Select the desired button, then select split it. It is helpful to do this ahead of adding sales items to your menu design. Splitting buttons does not affect the button size on the app. It just adds more buttons. If you split a button by mistake or just don't want that button split anymore, click rejoin button, then click on the button you wish to rejoin. If your device has a screen width of less than seven inches, the app will display the list view menu meaning all of the items on your menu will appear in a list. The app reads all sales items and menus within menus from the top left across row by row. To ensure your sales items and menus are in the order you want, put them on the menu in the appropriate order. Placement of buttons is key. For example, it can be helpful to put the most popular and most used items near the top of the menu and work across and downwards. Consistency is key. Follow the same layout style for all your menus to make it that much easier for your staff to use and navigate. To place sales items on the menu, find the POS item you want to add to your menu. From here, click once on the item you wish to place and click once on the button you wish to add the item to. Note that the item will continue to be selected until you hit the cancel button. When building your menus, it's best to make focus menus and your staff will be able to quickly select the specific menu with the specific menu items that they need access to. We recommend only adding sales items that you plan on selling through the mobile point of sale, as your existing menus can still be accessed at the point of sale terminal. At this time, function buttons added to a menu design are not supported on the app, but the app does have built-in function buttons that you will need to send and complete an order. If you want to edit the details for the button, click on the button to launch the Edit Menu button options. Here is one way you can add or change the color for this button. Once you have made your adjustments, select OK. Another way to change a button color is to choose the color via the drop-down on the main menu design screen. Then click on the button you'd like to apply the color to. You can continue applying this color to buttons until you click Cancel. If you do like to use color, we recommend grouping similar items together using a coloring scheme to help your staff visually when it comes to selecting items. However, avoid using too many different colors as it can actually make it more difficult for your staff to find the items they are looking for. If you need to move buttons around, select Move Button, then select the button you wish to move. Next, select the spot you'd like to move the button to. To remove an item from the menu, 
Select the button, then select Delete. And in the pop-up, select Yes. Alternatively, you can select Not Used from the Functions List box, then select the menu button you no longer want the item for, and select Yes to override it. You can continue doing this until you click Cancel. It is important to regularly maintain your menus and remove any items or buttons that are no longer available or applicable for this menu. If you want to link additional menus, they will display in a menu bar above the menu screen in Button Menu View. In List Menu View, the menus will appear as expandable slash collapsible sections in the list of menus. Instead of linking a menu within a menu, the Display Order Menu Tabs feature allows you to add additional menus without taking up space on your actual menu. Select the desired menus from the left-hand pane and add them to the right-hand pane. The menus will display in this order on the app. Once you have finished configuring the menu tabs, select OK. If you want to link a menu within a menu, you can add a menu button the same way you add a sales item. The app will read these menus from top left across, row by row. We recommend only using one of these options to access additional menus, not both. After you have designed, edited, and reviewed your menu, don't forget to select OK to save your changes. You do have the option to save as, where you can enter a new menu code to use this menu design as a template for another menu. Or you can create additional mobile menus following the steps we just looked at. Now that you've created your mobile menus, you can set a mobile menu as an override menu for your mobile terminals. We do recommend creating a terminal ID specifically for mobile point of sale. For example, M1, M2, etc. This will maintain your existing terminals without making changes to them. If you are already using a smaller menu, such as a beverage cart menu, you don't necessarily need to override that menu. If you need to set up a new terminal, select Set up another terminal. Otherwise, select an existing terminal. If creating a new terminal, enter or select a terminal ID, partition ID, sales area, and chip printer. Make sure the mobile POS settings have been configured for this terminal by selecting the mobile POS button. At minimum, Active needs to be flagged in order for this terminal to appear as a selectable workstation on the app. For more information on configuring a terminal for mobile point of sale, watch the video titled Mobile Point of Sale Terminal Slash Workstation Setup. Next, select the Area Overrides button. Enable Active under Menu Override. Then select the mobile menu you want assigned as the main menu for this mobile terminal. A settlement menu is not required as Mobile Point of Sale has the necessary function buttons built right into the app. Once you are done, select OK. Then select OK from the Terminal Setup program. Staff can switch between terminals slash workstations on the app, so continue this step for all your mobile terminals. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more how-to videos and don't forget to subscribe.